This has to have been two of the best sea days we have ever ever had. We are on our way to Greenland and it's been absolutely amazing. Let us tell you why. Hi, if you're new to our channel, we are Tom and Dom Travel and we release a new cruise related video every single week. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a like. It really, really does help our channel grow. And it is totally free. As usual, we woke up pretty early, had a couple of coffees delivered to our cabin through room service and then headed straight up to the Horizon Court Buffet. Buffet was really breakfast. The buffet was really busy. Again, really good selection. So we grabbed ourselves a couple of bowls of cereal and then we went out on deck just to have a little walk around and get a bit of fresh air. The weather was a little bit overcast, but it looked like it was gonna turn into a really beautiful sea day. The one thing that is missing from Island Princess that we've noticed is there's no international cafe. So unlike the Royal class ships that we've been on like Sky and Enchanted, there's no 24 hour food station that you can go to to grab some treats like sandwiches and cakes as well as hot teas and coffees. So instead we headed to the casino bar where we picked up a couple of coffees. The casino bar is like the international cafe however there's a really limited selection of cakes. But Good Spirits is meant to be like the international cafe with a selection of cakes and treats. We then grabbed a couple of coffees from the casino bar and headed out on deck. So today we thought we'd do a few laps of the deck to see what it's like here on Island princess. Now there isn't a full wraparound promenade here since it's been refurbed. Unfortunately princess has taken what was a wraparound promenade and turned it into extra cabins. You can still walk around the front of the ship however when you get to the back you do have to cross through the aft lift lobby. It's still absolutely fantastic little walkway and as those of you that watch our vlogs regularly you do know that we do love a wraparound prom. In the princess theatre there was a destination presentation taking place and we thought we'd just pop our head in just to have a look. However, we were both really, really surprised because it was so busy. It must have been the busiest destination presentation we have ever seen. There wasn't even any standing room. You couldn't even get into the main theatre. Uh absolutely packed so there'd be two presentations going on one by the naturalist and one by the destinations experience lady even the two were overlapping and you just could not get in for either everybody on this cruise has booked it for the destination and passengers were wanting to get in there just to find out more about greenland as we did mm. however there was just no chance of that happening today now as we were crossing from iceland to greenland we were actually really surprised that the temperature was quite warm so what we decided to do was sit up on on the pool deck and take in some of that lovely sunshine. It was really, really surprising. We were expecting it to be really cold. However, we were sat up there sunbathing and we actually caught the sun. Who knew? Yeah, Who we've knew? got a bit of tan on our face. Yeah, up here between Iceland and Greenland, it is quite sunny today. <laughs> Much warmer than home. Now, after sunbathing, we did pop into the Lotus Spa because we had been left a message on our in-cabin telephone to say that I had won $50 credit for the spa so we thought let's just pop down and see what the prices of the treatments are like well what we can say is that they are not cheap at all pretty much you're looking at an average of 149 to 300 dollars per treatment so the 50 dollars does not in fact save you a lot and what we did then find out is that on board they were running a promotion anyway that said any treatment we would offer you 50 percent off anyways it wasn't really a great price we both entered the spa raffle on embarkation day and luckily for tom he won. But I'm not going to use them, unfortunately, because I just don't think it is great value for money. As it is a sea day, it meant we had the opportunity to try lunch in the main dining room. So today we headed to the Bordeaux dining room for lunch. Really quick and efficient service. You do have to queue and wait for a table to be allocated to you. However, they're pretty well organized and you won't be waiting long for lunch. For my starter, I had the meat tortellini with a veal jus and it was absolutely spectacular. 
one of the best starters I've had on board and it was at lunchtime, so really impressed with that. And for my starter, I chose to have the Papadel pasta with a chicken ragu and it was absolutely delicious. There's one thing that Princess do really well on board their ships and that's pasta. For my main course then, I went for the chicken parmesan and it was absolutely huge piece of chicken really. Very tasty. You actually ironed it up because you thought you'd really like to have some. That would have been my first choice, but Tom beat me to it, I'm afraid. So I ended up with a chef salad. Now, it was a little bit disappointing, I've got to be honest. It was essentially uh, iceberg lettuce with cute bits of ham, some turkey, some cheese, and they did offer me a choice of dressing. Nothing exciting, was it? No, but I did eat it all. Then for dessert, I had a wonderful double chocolate fudge cake. So yes, I have definitely had far more calories than what Dom's had for my lunch today. What we have noticed that the desserts on board that do include chocolate are super chocolatey. So if you are a chocolate lover like myself, you're gonna do well on this ship. And I went for the cherry trifle, which was absolutely delicious. My only criticism was it's very, very small, but it was absolutely lovely. As we were leaving the Bordeaux restaurant, as it is a sea day, there's a whole host of activities taking place. And in the Princess Plaza, there was a spa demonstration with free massages and information about different treatments and creams and potions that you can purchase on board. We had a little wander around the ship and a little bit of a relaxation, and we made our way down to the Wheelhouse Bar for their 4 p.m. quiz, just to compare the differences. Yesterday, we actually managed to take part, which was really, really quite interesting and quite fun. However, today, it was absolutely rammed. There were people sitting on the floor. There were a number of members of staff rushing in with additional foldable chairs so people could sit down. It's an incredibly popular event here on Island Princess. We then headed back to our cabin to get ready for tonight's activities. It was at this point we had an announcement from the bridge. We've been very, very fortunate and very lucky. The captain on board has managed to secure us passage through the Prince Christian and also known as Prince Christian's Sound. So we're really, really excited for tomorrow. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. We've seen a number of videos and photos and we are so excited. It is a passageway that runs all the way through the southern tip of Greenland. Actually, Greenland is split there and it is going to be one of the most spectacular places we have ever visited. After getting ready in our cabin, we made our way down to Kroonas just to try some of their fancy little cocktails. I had a lovely little gin mojito drink. Like we've said, the vast majority of bars on board do have their own special drinks menu. I had a Cosmo, once again, one of my favourite drinks, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Tonight, we were dining in Sabatini's, the Italian speciality here on board Island Princess. Now, we have eaten in Sabatini's before on Enchanted Princess, and we thoroughly enjoyed the experience. So we were really, really looking forward to it. As Dom said, we have eaten in Sabatini's before, and it was an interesting experience. So if you want to check out our first Sabatini's experience, check out our Enchanted Princess vlog series. So we arrived around about 7.20 and we were promptly escorted to a beautiful table by the window. Yes, the head maitre gris in Sabatini's is super friendly. Sabatini's offers quite an extensive menu. There's a lot of courses and you just need to pick one course from each of the menu sections. We were greeted with a beautiful glass of house Prosecco, which was absolutely delicious, and also a selection of Italian breads with a beautiful olive oil and butter balsamic vinegar dip and it was absolutely delicious. And then we were promptly asked what drinks we would like to order from the bar, so we ordered our usual two glasses of Pinot Noir. We were then given a couple of fried rice balls that had like cheese in the middle. They were absolutely great as a little appetizer. They're very filling though, because they're not as small as they look. Because once you cut into it and you get all of that oozy cheese, you can see that they're packed with rice as well. Now this is going to become a theme of this meal that you need to take things slowly because there is a lot of of food. Then on to the first course. For my start, I just went for the salad. In terms of the first course, there is a limited selection and Tom went for the soup. The salad was okay. It wasn't the greatest salad I've ever had, but it was okay. The soup was nice, but no better, I would say, than the main dining room soups that I've been having all week. Then on to the next course and I chose to go for the mozzarella ball. Now it came on a bed of tomato covered in balsamic vinegar and olive 
foil, absolutely delicious. However, the mozzarella was literally the size of my two fists like that. There was no way I was finishing all of that. Delicious, however, it was just way too much. I then ordered the flatbread and it was super, super tasty. On the flatbread was a selection of beautifully tasting vegetables and mozzarella. Absolutely exquisite, really, really good course to have. Now I could have easily eaten all of the flatbread, but having been to Sabatines before and knowing my own appetite, I only ate half of it because I knew that I wanted to eat some more of the fantastic courses coming up. I did have a little taste of the flatbread and it was delicious and I think I should have gone for that. Then on to the pasta course. Now I chose to go for Sabatini's favourite beef and pork meatballs with spaghetti and it was delicious. You got massive meatball with a huge portion of spaghetti. It was delicious however once again I just couldn't eat it all. I had carbonara and oh I'm a big fan of carbonara anyway so it was absolutely beautiful. You tried a little bit of as well. Fantastic. And so how good it was so yeah carbonara was a great choice for me but just like Dom said I made sure I didn't eat it all because I've got more courses coming. On our previous Sabatini's experience the menu has changed slightly mm -hmm. and in addition to the main course you had lasagna. Lasagna is our favourite meal we probably have lasagna at home at least once a week so we both chose that. The lasagna arrived it was beautifully presented however However, in all honesty, we think lasagna that's available in the Horizon Court buffet is better than the lasagna in Sabatini's. 100%. It was just a little bit dry for us yeah. in terms of flavours. It was okay. However, the lasagna that we had a couple of days ago in the Horizon Buffet was far, far superior. Bit of a letdown for us on that course. Maybe we should have chose something else. And then onto the dessert that I have been really, really looking forward to. On our previous Sabatini's, we went for the Rocher dessert and it was absolutely spectacular. This huge Ferrero Rocher chocolate on a bed of chocolate mousse. Really, really looking forward to it. When it came, I was really disappointed. Essentially, it came in a martini glass. There was a small layer of chocolate mousse and the smallest Ferrero Rocher you've ever seen. Yeah. Not very impressed. Much, much smaller. Tom went for the best dessert selection. And I think it is by far the best option to go to. I went for the chef's selection. You are meant to get a smaller size of all the offerings on the dessert menu. Perhaps not the case this time. My Ferrero Rocher was exactly the same size as Tom little taster pot. Yes, yeah, so I would absolutely recommend going for the chef's selection. Sabatini's also has its own special drinks menus. If you're on Princess Plus or Princess Premier, then drinks in Sabatini's are included. In addition to the changes that we spoke about about Sabatini's, one thing that has also changed is the price. Now previously, this time last year, it was only $29 per person, and now it's coming in at $35 each. It has gone up with perhaps some of the meals being slightly smaller. Although overall, we think Sabatini's is great great value for money because there is a hell of a lot of food there. All in all, we were in Sabatini's for around about two hours. So once we'd finished, we quickly hurried to the Princess Theatre for tonight's show. So tonight's show was performed by Janine Johnson and her show was titled Soul Diva. She did a number of hits from Aretha Franklin, Adele, Shirley Bassey, and I've got to say, she was absolutely incredible. It's the best show we've seen on board any princess ship. She is fantastic and she is the first full standing ovation we have seen in this cruise probably in our last few cruises to be honest with you it was spectacular we thoroughly enjoyed her show and we can't wait because she's doing another one on our final night so we look forward to seeing her again if you do get a chance to see her do not miss this show there are a number of people on board that did miss the show and they were absolutely devastated mm. After watching Janine in the main Princess Theatre, we quickly hurried to the Explorer's Lounge where tonight was Ecstasy, the house band performing. So we had a few drinks, we sat at the bar, chatted to Carol and John, 
on and just enjoyed the evening. The bartenders there in Explorers Lounge are absolutely incredible and do make us all laugh so much. If you request Sex Bomb to come on, then they've got a full routine going on that they'll perform for you if you ask them. The bartenders there are fantastic. Now that was the end of our night, so no room service tonight because we were absolutely stuffed from Sabatini's and we wanted to get to bed at a reasonable time because we've got the most exciting day coming up tomorrow where we hit Prince Christian Sound. We had a little note on the pillow just saying to set our clocks back one hour because the part of Greenland that we're going to is three hours in front of the UK. Thanks for watching our crossing from Iceland to Greenland. If you've got any questions or comments, just put in the box below and we'll get back to you and please don't forget to like and subscribe and also hit that bell notification button to never miss a video from us thanks for watching bye bye, bye. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more content available on our YouTube channel, so press that subscribe button. If you're interested in receiving daily updates, we're available on most social media platforms. Just search for Tom and Dom Travel.